Ve hova mulak. Ola mula mulak. Ve hova mulak. Ya me. Rakis. Ve hova kadolla. Makarian tios. Ve hova yadonai. Ve hova yelohim. Kurios tios penta kreta. Kurios tios pistos. Elde et Yehova, el emuna Yehova. Ibas lion kurios, otios, open the crater. Baslios baslion, kai kurios, kurio. Yehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Yehova Elohim. Gadol Gadol Gibra El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Mahagion Panta Greta Gadol Gadol Gibra Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma El Nakum Yehova El Nakum Yapa Netzak Israel la sheker, gava, gava. Triembas Yehova, Jesus Christos, Panta Kreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Moraros Nasa, Elohim, Elohim. Illeilai Shalut, Yehova Malak. Yehova Malak, Olam, Olam, Ad. Yehova Elohino, Yehova Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Zaan Lagan, Ogar, Tautios. Dolas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikai Sune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Panta Kreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Yehova Ihe Elohim, Yehova Ihe Elohim. Ileilai Shalut, Yehova Malak. Yehova Malak, Jesus Christos, Panta Kreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Yehova, Yehova El Yehova. Yehova Rakum Shen, Yehova El Arak Ape, Rab Kesed Emet, Yehova Mine Mine Tikel Ufarsin, Derek Emanabakar Mishvat Shawa, The Megalogay of Yahweh Elelion Elohim. Is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible. An inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone.
great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique and well mentoring ministry our flood got the whole ghost one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of flood god's glory realizing the world which goes on its epi to am i called to be the feelings and the desires what they have in the world thinking that if they have good health and great health and they can go on to conceive anything on this earth by perception of the mind and they can come back to the process of what they can call this is the way of life the former lusts of ignorance rather than renewing their thinking to realize that they have called to be holy as the creator is holy the way how the world deteriorates we have a great number of lessons to learn from the life of joshua telling first till to the last one when christ or lord of god could write whom shall he go and peter answers where shall we go lord you have the words of living one and the final warning given by james emphasizing a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways the days will fly off seasons will roll off swiftly maybe today will be the last day of your life have you ever thought about your priceless soul which demands eternal life to be in the presence of lord god the father or you think till now god's time has not yet come for you in your life Dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. Let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date of eternity past, to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of the lord's mind infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the marvelous grace of lord to learn thy truth nothing on this earth o lord seemeth us for us to be happy or having to say a great joy of life until we come to confirm to your image on this earth The great reason you have given us this life O Lord is to confirm to your mind for which cause your predestined us in eternity past to do the praise of your glory that which could be a right son approval when we fulfill your marvelous desires on this earth your marvelous desire O Lord on this earth is nothing but to preach and teach your marvelous word and make the world to realize what a great thing we have to still survive by daily carrying your cross coming into your church learning your mind and becoming your mind to the world shining forth as light luminaries in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations so father once again being humble enough and to come to come unto your presence o lord to serve you with a pure heart a perfect heart and a willing mind so that lord you are the one who going to make our ways to be absolutely clear so that father we could come back and look and make up our lives to the standards of your word and make the things that which are pertaining to your glory so that lord we could be according to your terms on this earth so as we have come boldly once again to learn your mind in the standards of your grace we pray humbly the presence of lord god the holy ghost to know a lessons which have prepared and kept for us from the still small voice of your word to go and make disciples of all the nations so father as we come to study your mind we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message 
and Christ name we ask sovereign Lord. Amen. In Psalm 107, Psalms 107, in verse number 33, we have a verse which goes to teach to us the importance of what will be in our life if we neglect or if we make up our life to be against the Lord's word. So he says in verse number 34, A fruitful land will become barrenness, because the wickedness that there is dwelling therein. A fruitful land is the one which goes to be opening up its mouth in the renovated thought process of Bible doctrine. The land over here is Aretes, which goes on to say, to emphasize the point, no matter what may be the pressure upon your head, you can reign over it. So here, a fruitful land, which has to be your body now, called to be the earth. Because Numbers 14.21 emphasizes, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord God. So you're called to be a fruitful land, a land which goes on to be in the knowledge of Bible doctrine all the time. But now what it has become, he said it became a salt, wasted area. Because the word over here, what we find for barrenness, it is called a salt proclaimed area or called to be in simple terms saltiness. It has become an area like salt. The reason what we can find over here for salt is nothing but dear brethren, that the blood of your life, what for you have been given this life in your blood, is never disciple oriented. It has never built a wall of fortification for Bible doctrine. That's what if we can look, it says. Your blood is not at all disciple oriented unto Christ. Your blood is not at all building up a wall of fortification unto Christ. So we can understand over here why it becomes a salt, why it becomes a barrenness, why it becomes a place where there is no fruit in your mouth because your body is not coming to learn the word of Lord God. Therefore he said, the fruitful land, why does it become like that? Because you're rejecting the word of Lord God every day. You're not able to live and walk the terms of Bible doctrine every day. So here, dear brethren, he says, your mouth, when you open up, should be Bible doctrine. When you open up your mouth, 1 Peter 4, 11, divine oracles of Lord God, Colossians 4, 6, seasoned with grace of salt. But he said, your land has become barren. As they're trying to say, what if the salt has lost its savor, how it can be putting back once again into that salty content? Because he said, you have lost every day to take up your cross. You have lost every day to come back and do the will of Lord God the Father. You have lost every day to become a disciple, growing up into grammatics in the presence of Lord God the Father. After you die, how can you think that you can be once again seasoned back with salt? Therefore, that salt has made your land to be filled up. Therefore, there is no production of any plant. That means to say what? You are not qualified to take upon any verses of the Bible to say that you have at least fulfilled that verse. At least a little verse. In the time of your precious and troubles, you are going to claim up the promises of Lord God. The same thing over here emphasizes the point that you haven't been able at least to fulfill a single verse of that, what the Bible demands. A very, very simple single verse is what the Bible demands for you to be claiming there. You're not qualified for that. That's what he says. Therefore, what you become? You become a barren, salt, wasted people you become. Because already your blood has rejected while you are still alive on this earth. Discipleship program to be a wall of fortification in Christ. Your blood has absolutely rejected that. 
Your blood has become to such an extent day by day that you have really forgotten to take your Lord's will in your life. Therefore, what does he say? He says that these people have become as a salt wasted people. The reason is evil is dwelling in you. What is that evil? No clear teaching, no clear exposition of the Lord's mind, no clear emphasis of daily taking up your cross and coming to do the will of Lord God the Father, but becoming the Lord's mind. When that is not being done, he said, evil, 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 distorted thinking in your head is happening. Why do you get distorted thinking? When there is no basic definition of dispensation in your teachings, you cannot understand what distorted thinking you're preaching to the world. The dispensations divide the church, the Israel, the things which shall be in the eschatological events after the rapture of the church followed by the 70th week of Daniel and then what's going to happen in the millennium. When you don't discern between this great concept of Israel and the church, you can never understand what distorted thinking you're preaching to the world. Though the application is very much needed for us to learn from the principle of those passages and apply to be very greatly pure because he has stated he is holy in the past dispensation in Leviticus 19 and they couldn't stay holy. But now when we come to First Peter chapter 1, when Peter has been given this great revelation, emphasizes, grid up the lines of your mind so that you can go to renovate your thinking and what you shall be because the angels are also rubber making to look in so now you have to be holy because you cannot walk in your former lusts of ignorance in the past what you did but now what you have to be holy because he has called you to be holy in Exodus chapter 32 in verse 32 and 33 he said I will blot out the names of you any soul that sinneth against me I will blot out that meant to say what your blood is not having the thought process of Bible doctrine what I intended as a wall of fortification. The same thing he gives warning in the Sardis church of Revelation chapter 3, emphasizing in verse number 5, because you people weren't becoming disciples to me. Therefore, what I will do, I will blot out your name. Why the reasons that are happening? Because there are evil preachers for you. The word what we look over here in Revelation chapter 3, he says over here in verse number 5, blot out the word ex alapio. And the meaning of the word over here for ex alapio is nothing but your brethren. It is calling to say first, your soul hasn't conformed to the image of Christ. And that's what every pastor teacher has to train you up to conform to the image of Christ. That's what you've been predestined in the Lord says Romans 8, 29 to 32. The same thing what he said the duty in Ephesians chapter 4. That's the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. A male pastor teacher, every day he has the power to come back and teach the word of Lord God because he doesn't have the menstrual sickness like a woman. Today pastors are suffering greater menstrual sickness than a woman. She may have three days or six days. <laughs> But these people have lifetime of menstrual sickness. Therefore, they don't come to learn the word of Lord God every day and teach the word of Lord God every day. They can take great things of the Lord's mind every day. So what they do? They replace. How they replace? With lies. That's why a fruitful land will become a salt-wasted land. That is doctrine and grace-wasted land. Therefore, what does it become? The word calls to be barrenness. Your blood in your entire life was never disciple oriented to Christ. Your blood in your entire life was not at all able to prepare for the great work what Lord God the Father has kept you to build up a wall of fortification and to reside in that boundary of your great structure, what we can call as your defense mechanisms. And you can say, yes, Lord, I have used my blood purely for discipleship program. Yes, Lord, I've used my blood in going and building up a wall of fortification in the standards of your mind to the world. And the people are still thinking, no barrenness in you. 
And you may quote Second Peter chapter 1 in verse number 3 through 13. And we say, we are farsighted. We are having no barrenness in us because we are having to add for faith virtue. We are having this. We are having that, you know, the crisscross steps of seven things, which has to be first the faith for the faith. That's nothing but to learn doctrine. What is the required knowledge? And he goes on to teach ultimately what will become brotherly kindness, the love. The brotherly kindness and the love will come when you have true love towards the word of God. When you can compare your minds to the Lord's mind so that when you are growing up in the grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, then you can truly express your true love. And if you are truly loving your fellow brethren, as Christ the Lord of God said, I have laid down my soul to my people, so you shall also lay down your soul to them. And what do you lay down in your soul? Everyday Bible teaching. You know why? You cannot pay the price for your priceless soul. All the money being put together, he said, you cannot save one soul. If you lay down your soul, that meant to say what? Dedicate yourselves to become pure preachers of Lord's mind. Don't get into the world which has been associated with sheer rats of lies, coating you with all mannerism of lies. And people are so happy. Because you know why? Evil is dwelling in the world. What evil, you may say? Distorted thinking. What is the distorted thinking? We shall look from First Peter chapter four, First Peter chapter one. You can understand some concepts over here because why your soul shall be blotted out from the presence of Lord God the Father. He said, "Be obedient, children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance." The word lusts over here has very beautiful meaning, dear brethren, because epithumia are, or the word we can call epithoma which is nothing but first what's the standards of your desire you know what these unbelievers will think they think if they have great energy and strength in their body that's enough for them therefore they have a great expression of joy in their body they have a good health, they have a great strength, so they think we can really work out upon our feelings we can really work out upon our desires so, dear brethren, here we find the word for epithomai, which has been called over here in First Peter. He says, this world is running in these terms and conditions. What's happening in the world? He says in simple words, as technon children of obedience, we need to obey, make up your viewpoint of life to the vigor and valor of Bible doctrine. So he says, not configuring, that meant to say what? Don't confirm to the previous things. The word over here, what we call to be su schemati zomenoi. And the meaning over here is nothing but not confirm in the standards of becoming or fashioning to your mouth under the authority for the world what they come in. Don't be under that authority of the world. So he says, as offsprings of of obedience, that meant to say what? Technon hupakaos. And the word technon is nothing but the people who come to take every day the cross and come and follow Lord God every day in the teaching and in the training. So he says, as children of obedience, and what they have not configuring to the former lusts. And what is there in the former lusts? Their mouth in the vigor and valor would say, we have a thought process in our head being renovated. How they have a thought process in their head being renovated? They say, if we are fit and fine, if we are having great strength, if we are having great vigor and valor, if we are able to make up the things with money or the things having a good health, you know, they love to say health is wealth. That's what the quotation goes in the world. So they say, we have a great health, we have a great wealth. That's enough. That's your former lusts. And over here, dear brethren, and that form of what does it become? It goes to take them to agnonia. And that agnonia is nothing but your ignorance. And in that ignorance, dear brethren, what happens? Your blood will say no for renovation of your thinking. Your thought process has not been built back according to the terms and conditions of the Lord's mind. Ignorance is that agnonia. That's what it happens. The thought process in your blood says no to the word of Lord God. Therefore, your thought process is not able to build up to the structure demanded by Lord God. Therefore, ignorance comes. 
That's what the world is happening today. Therefore, you find distorted thinking is dwelling in the world. Why? Because first of all, the pastor teachers have not been bona fide gifted. They haven't come under the authority of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone to teach the accurate word of Acts Jesus, isagogics and categories with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations. And in order to do so, it demands a faithful preparation. You know how the present Christendom has been deteriorating in its ignorance? If these people would have risen up to teach to the world that you cannot build up a wall of fortification in your blood and you cannot make up to your next generation to see that every thought has been bought according to the strength that could be in your body. That's what the people will talk in the feelings or the desires, what they have. These are two things, what they have. Feelings or desires. Feelings, they say that we have great strength for us to overcome anything that's happening in this body because we have good health desires they go on to pass down that information to the next generation to say that why can't we build a wall of fortification under such thought process in our blood to make sure that our every thought talks in the process of making our children also to say that if they are healthy if they are good then they are wealthy and they are wealthy they can have everything in this earth that's what the world is about the lusts and Satan has blinded them to think upon that we Christians are not so. We Christians are heavenly citizens, he said. Therefore, he says in verse number 15 of this first Peter, emphasizing the point, you be holy as God the Father in heaven is holy. Don't walk and talk in the terms of your feelings. Don't look upon the terms and conditions of your desires which have been contrary to the Lord's mind. Therefore, he said in that great chapter of Psalms 107 in verse number 34, evil is dwelling, therefore fruitful land has become a wasteland. And what's that evil has taken place? Distorted thinking. You know, when we read the Bible, we can understand the things, how the man minds has been deteriorating on the feelings and the lusts of this world. In Joshua chapter 24, he said, Whom shall we go? <laughs> the very first example, you just look, the structure, how the lives of the men have been deteriorated. You know why? Because evil is dwelling. Why? Because they want the lusts, the ignorance of the lusts to be fulfilled. The former lusts which they have, that they have to be fulfilled. Therefore, they make weekly Christians, nomin nominal Christians, coming to be monthly Christians, yearly Christians, but day by day carrying your cross and becoming the disciples of the Lord God's mind, as he defined in Acts chapter 11, particularly in verse number 26, about the first time Christians in Antioch, they forget about that principle every day, carrying their cross and coming and doing the will of Lord God the Father. They don't do that. Now they come to talk, we are really great. Look upon your former lusts. They have been called into the ignorance. But here he says, now after believing in Christ, the angels are rubbernecking to look what the pulpits are teaching. Therefore you now build up the loins of your mind. Talk the terms and conditions of the word of Lord God, not the things of this world. But you know what we're doing today? We are the greatest stupid people of all time that are living in spite of giving to us such a great prayer of Baltimore privileges so that every pastor teacher, if he has the bona fide gift, he would make up the church to come back and look and learn the word of Lord God every day. But they're not at all happy. In spite of that, what they do, they go to propagate lies. You know, a man who loves to sell his products he knows the products are not good they're not genuine they're not true they're not worth to the money what they have been paid and buy by the customers at what does he do his constant bombardment of his advertisement will make the people to look that's what the world is doing today in christendom the constant bombardment of advertisement about lies ignorance not getting into cognizance of Bible doctrine, but what you have, ignorance. What sort of an ignorance? De the ignorance of not carrying your cross every day. The ignorance of daily teaching the word of Lord God every day. Above all, the ignorance of not being with earnest scares. Paul Deza, as he says about, is the same thing about even 
Titus when he said, He has great care towards you. But today no one is having such care. Or neither they are happy to go and to be spoudiza in 2 Timothy 2.15 to diligently teach the Lord's word. They don't have that care. What a faithful witness will be to the Lord tomorrow, dear brethren. The problem in the Christendom, what we are going through, is that you are not able to realize how much you are having distorted thinking reigning in your pulpits. Just compare yourselves. Don't go for exegesis. Don't go for isagogics. Just read the simple plain word of the Lord. <laughs> Even the unbelievers in my country, India, they recognize the two out the teachings of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which are so great and simple. And they have songs for them in their Veda. They talk about that, saying that in the Puranas, how beautiful words Christ our Lord of God has taught. They compare him as one of a guru. They don't compare him as a god. And a man says, how great teachings he has given for them and the people have just threw them out. You know why they threw them out? Because they don't love the priceless soul. A priceless soul demands your eternal life. How can you get it without fulfilling the demands of the word of Lord God? How can you achieve it? You know when Nehemiah chapter 2, when you can understand in verse number 8 and following, when Nehemiah goes to be with his king, he said, Lord, he goes on to claim towards his king, provide me a letter so that the good hand of the Lord God shall be with me. Because he's going to build up the work of Lord God. He's going to do the will of Lord God. The very simple lesson what we learn. First seek his righteousness and his kingdom. Then all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6.33 The same thing. Delight yourself into the desires of Lord God the Father. Because if you don't delight in the ways of Lord God the Father. Then how can you can fulfill your desires? He said Psalms 37.4 in Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, he said, Look and seek and search the kingdom of God first. That's a very simple logic. The same thing he says over there in John 6, 26 and 27. Labor for the food which perisheth, not rather than laboring for the food which perisheth. How many things are there for us to learn? And that's what we are doing today. The good hand of Lord God the Father is upon you to train the congregation to become the disciples of the word of Lord God. Eighty people are not even able to make it up. Why? Because you have distorted thinking reigning in your minds. You don't even consider what sort of a life it is for you. Therefore he said, Look upon the great teachings what the Bible has. The Christians have thrown out long back. The unbelievers at least now, they don't even consider. Because they say, morality is enough. Sanatana dharma is enough. I say that's good for what? For humanity. But we are not talking about humanity. We are talking about in this human nature called to be spirituality. Called to be as kinekatesis, a quality that did not exist earlier. Called to be as a new spiritual species in Christ. They're talking about the new spiritual species in my Lord. They're not talking about the things what the world is looking for, humanity. Humanity, let those things in the unbelieving mind, they can make it up. Because they have those feelings, they have those desires. The feelings to make up to say, we build up a wall of fortification as an Allah of energy. So that you can make up your body to be a great joy when you have great strength in you. That's what the world goes on to be as a feeling. And what they desire, they desire the same thing to teach to the children. Say that, don't worry, anything let it be on the face of the earth. You can go back to have a good health and that will lead you to good wealth. You know the people can have good health if they're not fallen sick. You know people can't understand why they're falling sick. The reason for falling sick is nothing but the sin what they commit against the Lord God. Exodus 15, 26 teaches to us long back. None of the sicknesses shall come upon you when you diligently hearken to my words and fulfill it and to do it. 
The same thing what we look in Leviticus chapter 10 in verse number 8 and following when he said to Aaron what you have to do with your work. Teach the difference between the holy and the unholy things. That which is clean and unclean things. That's what you have to teach. In verse number 11 he goes to teach in the same book of Leviticus 10 emphasizing all the commandments that I have given to you. This people should be taught, they should come to know, they should come to realize. Who are doing that today? Even we, the Christians, so-called the pastor teachers as well, where they're doing every day to teach the word of Lord God, where is the inculcation of the Lord's mind every day in our pulpits? It should be a fruitful land. It has become a salt-wasted land, a barren land, a land which has been taken care of by the evil to dwell there. God hasn't given permission for the evil to be dwelt there. Lord God has set you free. He has given your own volition. Which way you want to choose, you have been left over. Ignorance of the word of Lord God. Or arrogance to live in your former lusts. In spite of giving you the warning. And the Bible so clearly, explicitly teaches to us many things which we need to learn. In the time of Joshua chapter 24 in verse number 15, he said, the challenge is presented to the people of God. As Joshua could tell, choose yourselves this day whom you will serve, or whom you will be born slaves, for whom you will be slaves. That's what we read yesterday. You may be thinking, I cannot be slave to this, I cannot be slave to that. If your body is not a slave to Christ, if your body is not a slave to carry its cross, if your body is not a slave to go and do the will of Lord God the Father, then you're a slave for someone or the other, or something in your life. So he says over here, in the standards of First Kings chapter 18, the same thing he said. The same challenge was presented to the people of God on a number of occasions. Elijah said the same when he confronted Israel and the idols of King Ahab. But they were quiet, you know, deterioration. Because already the time of Joshua, when Moses was dead, this people coming to the conclusion of this chapter number 24, though he has erected a structure and he engraved with the law of the word of Lord God upon a stone and he keeps their tree as a witness and he calls them to serve the Lord God. And they said, we will serve, but he said, you cannot serve him. He is a holy, jealous Lord God. You cannot go to fulfill his demand. And he said, me and my house, we will serve the Lord God. But now it's not the theme. The theme for us is in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every knee shall bow before the Lord God. Every tongue shall confess before the Lord God, but not against their volition. They have to come by their own volition. When the consciousness has been taught, the pure and the clear word of Lord God. That's what they have to come. Dear brethren, when you haven't been there in the process of learning the true word of Lord God, you cannot make others to have the reflection of the true word of Lord God because the word of Lord God is alive and powerful. It makes others also to become to the consciousness because they have been creation. They are not the things pertaining to be saying as gods. These are creations. They are not creators. They have to bow down because we are creation. We are not creators. Every creation shall bow down. You may just think stupidly to waste your time on the planet Earth. In a day having 1 GB of data assigned for you every day 24 hours. For some 1.5, for some 2.5, for some 3, for some unlimited data they have. What they will do with that? They will fill up their brains with all the mannerisms of former lusts. They have those ignorances in their mind. They have those arrogances in their mind. And in those former lusts of the life, they love to fill up their brains with such stupid things. And therefore what they come, they come to the conclusion to say that for us, we have a great Aleph energy for us. We have a great strength of all the fortification for us. And we are having a great happiness in us. Why? Because we have a good amount of money. We have a good amount of health. We have all X, Y, Z, good, good, good. So why we care God? 
Look upon the standards of deterioration till where it has come. When Joshua was telling them, you cannot serve such a great Lord of a God because he's holy and jealous Lord God, the people failed utterly. When the time comes in Elijah of 1 Kings 18, he said, they were quiet, they were silent, they couldn't answer. Just look the phases of deterioration from where you have fallen. Today also, the first century, when there was a great zeal, therefore he says in the book of Revelation chapter 2, for your first love, where you have left out. Come back and look upon your first love. Your first love towards Christ, your first love towards the creator who gave you this, this chance to serve him and to be a humble witness in the creation for what he has called us by trampling down Satan under our feet and being in the great history pages of heavenly realm. So where's the first love? And the people may say we don't have first love. Because the times deteriorated. Just look a gap between Joshua and Elijah. A span of four, five hundred years or six hundred years. How it has come? Just look. Deterioration stages. How it has happened? Because they forgot Lord God days without number. That's what you can find over here to understand the concepts. Emphasizing the points over here to teach. In this Great word to teach for us. They have forgot me days without number. And that's what we need to look over here in Jeremiah chapter 2. What a great pain it will be to my Lord God to understand how much they have forgot my Christ and his ministry on this earth. Therefore, the span of those 600 years, almost all we can take, six to 800 years, it might be, deterioration. He says over here in verse number 32, our beginning with verse number 25 we shall take. Withhold thy food from being unshod and thy throat from thirst. But you said there is no hope. No, for I love strangers and after them I will go. That means you are not interested in the word of Lord God. Again the word hope meant to say no fire. Withhold uh, as a thief is ashamed when he's found so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets. The categories you just look, kings, princes, priests, prophets. They're saying to a stock, you are my father, and to a stone, saying that you have brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of the trouble, they will say, arise and save us. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise, if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. Wherefore will you plead with me? You all have transgressed against me, said the Lord God. In vain I have smitten your children. They received no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, see you the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness. Wherefore say my people, we are lords, we will come no more unto thee. And then he says, Can a maid forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? At my people have forgotten me days without number. This word will be very unique in the entire Bible. Days without number. You know what you should be? In Revelation chapter 1, when you look in verse number 9, he says he was put in a prison in an island of Patmos. For what? To be a witness. For what? To the word of Lord God and to the testimony of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, what for you are behind the bar? A what for your slaves to the lusts of this world? What for? If it is not a witness for the word of Lord God, or if it is not a witness to be a martyr for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then what for your behind the bars? What for your behind the old sin nature? What for your still slaves to your old sin nature lusts? What best are you going to get in that? 
He says, with days without number, they've forgotten me. The same thing over here, he replies, Elijah. And afterwards you look, we come an entrance directly to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because now we can find the religious leader challenging up my Christ in Matthew 20 to 21, he said, about the time pertaining to the tribute given to Caesar. And the Lord responded saying to them, the things that which are to Caesar, give to Caesar, and the things that which are to God, give to God. And it should today speak to us, if the image of Caesar was on the coin, then if they were to give for Caesar, then we have upon us the image of Lord God, and how much we have to give to God the Father. Or are we giving him to that? You have upon you the image of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dear brother. You're not able to realize your body has the image of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are we giving to Christ that which is due unto Him? Are we able to make up to make up to Christ that which is belonging unto Him? And what for your slaves? The two things what He said in, first, in, in Revelation chapter 1 in verse number 9. He became a slave. He came to the prison for or to the island of Patmos, whatever been isolated from the people. The same thing what is happening today. Why you come to the earth? You become a witness to the word of God, a witness to a testimony for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A testimony over there, what you can look upon the word, Martu Romai. In Revelation chapter 1, and this word has a lot of meaning for us. He says, first of all, for the word of Lord God, and the Meaning of the word over here for martyr or my is nothing but to become as a great witness. How we shall become a witness? First of all, developing your thought process to be disciple for Christ. So that no matter however they look into you, you will be having a viewpoint to get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's a martyr to Christ. First of all, you'll be having that thought process. The thought process of becoming what we can call as erecting a structure for discipleship program in the Lord God. That's the very first thing. And the very next thing he says, we have to be to the viewpoint of getting your every thought into captivity for Christ. So that's what he said. A martyr or my a developing, first of all, in you, a erection of a structure to be disciple-oriented so that in every viewpoint of life it has to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Therefore, you'll be called as a witness heap in the presence of Lord God the Father. And that witness heap will be like the standards called as Yaduk. As an ark of testimony, what you can call as a Yaduk. Because a viewpoint of life should get every thought into captivity for Christ. Therefore, where is your witness for what you have been a slave? He said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island or isle of that which is called Patmos. You have been there or here on this pilgrimage trip for what? Not only just to save your priceless soul, but also save the souls of many, as many as you can, to pull them out from the lake of fire, we read in Jude. Pull them as many as we can from the lake of fire. That's what your great work is. That's what your great burden should be for the Lord. Where's the burden today? What burden you have? You have a burden for your family life. You have a burden for your details of life. You have a burden for everything apart from Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what? Lord God the Father made you for Him. The rich man, when he died in Luke chapter 16, we look. Abraham reprimanding him to the context over there to teach. You lived your own life. You haven't lived the life of Christ. You're designed to live a life of Christ. That's what I've been made in the image of Christ. That's what I've been called to confirm to the image of Christ. That's what I've been made to be predestined in the image of Christ. Says Romans chapter 8 verse 29 through 32. 
That's why I've been given the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers whose bona fide duty is to daily teach the word of Lord God, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, with the process of making up to be as the Rima declaration of Bible doctrine, not Logos, but Rima, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Lord God. Every day we have to teach. Then you shall become that which has been called over here in all of energy to be in the purpose of what Lord God the Father has kept your life for you to be on this earth. Now why the standards gets deteriorated? You're not any longer a witness. Your parents haven't witnessed to you. What if you'll give to your progeny? <laughs> Anything apart from the burden of the Lord, isn't it? No missionary work. People are perishing. Souls are going out. You know what? When you suffer for your sicknesses in your beds, then you'll realize what hell is. But Lord God the Father has given you time and opportunity and a good health to serve Him, having all the things associated with you, so that you can work out the saving souls. You're looking for your lusts to be fulfilled. Lusts of your own name and fame, the lusts of your own ignorance, the lusts of your own arrogance. Having an occasion to give no money to start up the things. And when you have been put in the bed, when you are suffering for your sicknesses, then you will realize, I have faced the hell. I have seen the hell. That meant to say not literally, if not he has to be sent to the second part of the pain and the agony what is going through is just like a hell. That just imagine the perishing souls have gone to the hell at the cost of your ignorance. At the cost of your own arrogance not to do the will of Lord God the Father, not to work the will of Lord God the Father. What will you answer to Lord God the Father for the cost of those perishing souls when they're weeping and wailing forever in the presence of Lord God the Father because they haven't been encouraged to look what will be the true life in Christ. If God the Father has given a talent for you to make up, a ready channel, a TV channel, anything that can reach the people, if Lord God has given you that great talent, how can you stop the works of the Lord? How can you stop? Do you not think he loved the same love or the perishing love he has kept for the things pertaining to him while he was alive? He loves with equal love to all. He doesn't have any passion. The same love what he had towards Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the same love is given for you. The same love is given for entire human race, including the unbelievers. Therefore he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And people may not believe in my Christ. Will they believe at least in your sicknesses? If you are a human being, you will fall sick. The reason for sickness is don't try to give your alibis or reasons or excuses. Climatic conditions, this or that. You'll fall sick, isn't it? One or the other day. You remember the reason behind that sickness is his purely sin. That's what we look and learn from the Bible. Where there is sin, there is sickness. Sin and sickness go to be like uh, images of an opposite coin or a coin having an opposite image. Where there is sin, there is sickness. So you may say, we are not sinning, then then to why getting sickness? The reason is I haven't believed in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John chapter 16, verse number 8. That's where you get your sicknesses. For a believer, you are still grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They need to have a great sicknesses for you. And yet, what we're doing today in our pulpits. So he says, I have come over here for the reason to be a witness. He came to that island of Patmos, then what for you have come to the earth? He comes only for two things, he said. First of all, he said, I have come over here to be for the word of God. The first thing. Logai Theos. How can you get into the word of Lord God? 
you have anything on the earth? He said, what all you have? Sell it off, but buy two swords. You have two swords, it's enough. A sword represents the word of Lord God. What all you have? Sell it off. Come and buy the precious field where you found the treasure. The treasure on this earth is nowhere else but in the word of Lord God. Unending treasure. You will fail, but that treasure will not be exhausted. You have so many things that to begin, take and learn and teach. You have so many things to make the world to realize. What an attribute Lord God the Father has given for us. You will fail. But the word of Lord God has an unending mind. The mind that will not get exhausted. You have so many things there in the word of Lord God to learn. You have so many things there in the word of Lord God to be known. And you know what we are doing day by day? What for you are born on this earth? Have you ever known on that? What's your burden? You may ask your burden in such and such. Purely what? Viewpoint of life. A viewpoint of creation, not the viewpoint of creator. Creator viewpoint will be only one thing, perishing souls. He doesn't have anything more than that. All the things on this earth may be ratified. You may get what you lose, like the case of Job. Abundantly you may be blessed like the way how Solomon was blessed. Earning money, making money, making a life tries to say that we are a social status symbol. You may get your power and vigor by becoming a political party. All those things are not needed. You can become anything, but you cannot save one soul if you lose it. We Christians are in the business of saving souls. We are not in the business of the world. Perishing souls just walk. From Joshua 24, 15 until the time of Elijah, almost all six to eight hundred years of span, how many people they were and they were dumb. They couldn't open up their mouth because they were being fed by dumb dogs. They were failed in the proper work of Leviticus 10 when he said to Aaron, a light bringer, you teach to the congregation that which is holy and unholy, that which is clean and unclean. Let them come to know all the statutes of the Lord's mind. But what they became? They became fools. Elijah is a prophet. He's not a Levite. He's a prophet. A recommendation what we read in Jeremiah chapter 2. He said the kings, the princes, the priests and the prophets. All of them they became vanity to me. Because they forgotten me days without number. Today you can look in the present Christendom. We should be grateful and thankful to the Lord at least. After that Protestant Reformation movement. He has given Bible in your own hands and the people are so blinded. Not to read the scriptures, to take every day across and come back and look and learn the word of Lord God. Why? Because you pastor teachers are evil to the core. Distorted thinking is reigning in your head under the name called as denomination. The Bible doesn't define denomination. Bible defines exegeomai, exegesis of the word of Lord God every day. Day in and day out, be well prepared to teach the word of Lord God. Word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier. Let them be conformed to the image of Christ. If they are not conformed to the image of Christ, their place is in the lake of fire forever. That's what Apostle Paul said in Galatians. A labor pain of a woman which we pass through to produce in you, Christ. If a baby who has been born, for example, it may be any problem with the chromosomes or something like that. Either the baby should be born as a male or a female. Or eunuchs. If there is any other thing of a formation of a baby, for example, you can understand the comic stories. That's what we call comic stories. In the cartoons only it happens. A pig loving a giraffe. That's what they think. 
we have some great comic pictures who have come up in that way so that they can entertain the children. It will be good for the children. A pig can marry a giraffe and they think they both are great lovers. You can find that happening in the cartoons, not in the real life. Likewise, in the midst of the Old Testament, what we can look, or in the New Testament of the Greek, what we can look, they are having Dagon gods, half human being, half animal structure for it. Half will be human being, half animal structure. Is it neither complete human, neither complete animal? So they called as Dagons. So now just imagine a baby has been born who's like a Dagon, what he will do with that? For example, if he's having a legs tilt to the abdomen, and then above he has a structure like an animal, or like a fish. Can you reason with that fish? Can you talk to that fish and train? Can you feed that fish? You know the point what I want to tell? If you haven't confirmed to the complete grown-up image of my Christ, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for which you have been predestined in the Lord, for which you have been given this bona fide duty in Christ to daily teach the word of Lord God, and if you don't confirm to the image of my Christ, Colossians 3.10 or Colossians 3.1 or Colossians 1.25-29 or Ephesians 4.2-12, you know the word, the word of Lord God says, since you haven't confirmed to the image of my Christ, you are rejected to the cause. You are rejected simply to the cause. That's very simple. You have been rejecting to the cause. Because you are neither male nor female, you are neither eunuch. You are some sort of a species which Christ the Lord of our God wants to make every believer to be conformed to his image. Therefore he has given this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. He has given this completed can of scripture. He has given the involuntary ministry begging before God the Father so that the same spirit what he was been living in the flesh is giving to us so that the same spirit of Lord God which was in Christ could lead us and guide us and make us to be completely to the confirmation of the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being formed in us. Therefore there is no excuse for it. In the past dispensation, they couldn't have this involuntary ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have right now in the church age before the Lord. We are inexcusable. That's what we read in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 25 through following. He did not spare them while you spake from the earth, then how much more it will be horrible for it not to be spared. Once again, he goes to shake the heaven and the earth because he speaketh now from the heaven. And you think you can make fun? A half God, half man, just look what will be your fate. Can you go to the presence of the Lord? He will call you rejected specimens. You know what? You cannot be rejected specimens. Either you have to be a male or a female. A eunuch, 50-50. You cannot be like those specimens named as Degans. You cannot. You cannot be as those Degans specimens. If you're having been born to your parents in that chromosomes of 23 and 23 being supplied, a zygote being formed, the result will be the male or female or eunuch. No other option apart from these three, the Dagons. If you have been born in Christ, First John chapter 3 verse number 9, if you have the sperma called to be the word seed, if you have the sperma of Christ, there is no way you can be immature Dagon. Not just Dagon, but immature we call. You know why? When the Spirit of the Lord God is given you that power to become a Christian in Christ, a believer in the Lord, He has transformed you from the kingdom of darkness into the light. And that Spirit of the Lord God, what you have now, is a powerful spirit called to be dunamis. 
It's a spirit called as agape love. It's a spirit called Sophronismos mind. We have such a great thing for us to learn. The sperm of Christ will produce in you the image of Christ. The problem is you haven't yet born again in the Lord. You are not the way have these people deteriorated from Joshua to the time of Elijah. And afterwards from the time of Elijah we come the appearance of my Christ. Because already the standards are deteriorated. Though many great men being sent by Lord God. I, I, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Great many men who taught them. In fact, indeed, my messengers called to be Malachi, the last one. Though the New Testament ends up with curse, they couldn't understand it. They are going contrary to the word of Lord God. And in Matthew chapter 22, after the beginning of the ministry of my Lord God, they want to come back and ask on whose image we have. In your body, you have the image of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, inscribed upon you. Then for what you are going to live on this earth? What are your burdens? Many souls are perishing without knowing my Christ. You cannot sleep even having a good sleep to say that, Lord, I will take a rest for some time. In the meantime, the devil will come and sow the things pertaining to be tears. We read that in Matthew chapter 13. And the thoughts will start to grow up. This is on. What happens ultimately? The plant will be the same. The color will be the same. When the fruit comes, this will be black and that will be golden brown. Wheat will be golden brown, but this will be black. And yet you people are not able to realize that. How much you want to take rest? What's your life? Just calculate your 100 years of life. Because if you have been spending 120 years, the day from your day you have been born to your mother's womb, you cannot go to be reasoning and talking till you can reach some certain age of reasoning, like the age of 20, what Jeremiah was. So we live off from 20 to 120, 100 years of calculation. How much days? You have 100 years, 36,500 days for your life accounted, accredited to your account. And every day what you're looking, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. You have the spirit of Lord God, dear brethren. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. And why are you hindering the work of my Lord God? You need to give an account for the perishing souls tomorrow. You have an inscription upon you, the image of my God. You have an inscription upon the coin, Caesar, so he said, render to Caesar the things unto Caesar. You have an inscription upon your soul, the image of my Lord God. So where is your image of Lord God being formed if you have dwelling in the evil? Because a fruitful land should be as become a barren land. How many great things are there for us to still study and teach from the word of Lord God, from the original content of the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. How many great things, marvelous things have been there being penned by Lord God, the Holy Spirit for us to diligently dig, look and search. We are not talking about the people who are working. We are talking about the pastor teachers who could really do that work every day. It's their bona fide duty to teach whether they hear or phobia. If they're not able to make it up, at least upload in the YouTube. If not, remove the title as a pastor teacher for you to be capped. Just remove it out. You are not worth for that. Just don't think you can have mouth to brag about and you can talk. You have some logics to reason. You have some statistics to talk. You have some things to tell according to your own convenience. Don't mull the scriptures. Teach what is the truth. You are answerable to Lord God, not to men. People are trying to preach men. When the king of an England was able to come to the church and the preacher was preaching and the assistant coming by the side room he says to the preacher king is here <laughs> the preacher doesn't care for it and he says king of kings is here I need to answer him every time the minister should have and is able to stand in the pulpit and is able to preach the opposite door what he has to be he has to look upon the angel of the Lord God standing there holding a sword in its hand the way how the Balaam donkey looked in. That's what your life should be. 
If you don't go to do the will of Lord God the Father, he said, I will slew you out. <laughs> Better fear God, not man. Better try to preach for God's sake, not for the man's sake. That's what Apostle Paul said in Galatians 1 in verse 10. If I were here to be impressing men, pleasing men, I wouldn't have been the bond slave of Lord God the Father. To do what they are, they're happy to become bond slaves for men. And though the people are perishing, they're not happy. Though the people are not able to make up the time for Christ, they're not happy. Come weekly once to the church, it's enough. And the pastor, what he will do? He will have, in a week, his menstrual sickness. So today I have preached for you in the Sunday, so you will meet again the next Sunday, because the six days is going for menstrual sickness. The word of Lord God says, every day preach the word. What they're doing? Can you be a witness as this Apostle John was as a witness? Just look, the deterioration from Elijah time till to the Caesar point in Matthew 22. And then just look still for the deterioration from there, from Matthew 22, we find the next category of deterioration which goes on to say, whom you shall choose. Whether Barabbas or Christ, our Lord of a God of Nazareth. Barabbas was a thief and murderer. <laughs> Ignoring the word of Lord God, you will find bitterness and death. Accepting the word of Lord God, you will have eternal peace and life to be followed. The two options have been kept Christ, our Lord of Nazareth. A Barabbas who is a notorious murderer and thief. You know what the people choose? Just look. The senses have been absolutely out. The word of Lord God says, you are having an inscription of Caesar, so give the things to Caesar. Then you're having upon you being made by God, inscription of God. Then give the things to Lord God. Look upon the thinking of the people. They love to choose Barabbas. He is the son of the devil. John 8.44 says he was the son of his father called to be the devil. And who was Christ our Lord of a God? The Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I have done all things well in Mark 7.37. He was the son of God. So whom he choose, the devil or the son of God? He said in Matthew chapter 6 in verse 24, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God, that is Son of God, and you cannot serve Mammon, called to be the devil. Whom will you serve? If you're not able to serve Christ, then whom will you serve? Just look from Joshua 24, 15, where you have fallen. You're choosing Barabbas. The history teaches to us all the time, this is what man is because of his former lusts of ignorance. Because he doesn't know what for he has been kept on this earth. As Revelation chapter 1 verse number 9 emphasizes. To be a witness for the word of God. And to be a testimony for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yet they want to produce barrenness. Rather than producing fruitful field to the Lord. Dear brethren. James concludes to teach us a lesson. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know what? You don't have the sperm of Christ. That's what he meant to say. You love to say, I'll have a sperm of Christ. You love to say, I will do this, I will do that. But when the world comes, when the pressure comes, you let go. The world comes for the lust, the pressure comes to blaspheme in the name of my Christ. So you let go, my Lord. The world comes with his lusts. The pleasures comes to blaspheme the Lord. Unstable mind, he says. The Christians, you cannot have an unstable mind. You have a sophronismos mind. Second Timothy 1 7. The dying epistle of Apostle Paul to the church. The last epistle of him, what he writes. After that, he's been beheaded off. He gives this information. You have given the spirit of power, dunamis. You have been given the spirit of love, agape. You have been given the spirit of sophronismos mind, not an unstable mind. 
an unstable mind, you are not at all stable in your ways. Because you are double-minded man. A double-minded man will be unstable. Why and how you can become a single-minded one? Only when you come to be in accord with Christ through his word. Then you become a single-minded one. Because the thoughts of what Lord God the Father wants to be in you through the word of Lord God which is revealed for us in the Bible. Those thoughts thought exegetically, categorically, isagogically with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations can make you to become one soul or one mind with the law. So he'll be as one-minded man, not double-minded man. Because a double-minded man will be unstable in all of his ways. And that man who has been unstable in all of his ways, you know what the decision will be for him? He will not be believing God. That's very simple. When Peter was asked the same question, do you also want to go? In John 6, 67, 68, he said, Lord, where shall we go? Because you have the words of eternal life. Always your consciousness to be there to take a decision to serve the Lord God with your strength. With the time allocated for you, with all the financial resources you have, so that today is the day to start up. Don't be a double-minded person. Therefore, he said, Lord God's time is now, because the days fly fast. Swiftly, speedily, tacos, the seasons will roll. Today, if you're alive, it's yours. It may be your last day. Believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for your paralyzed soul, rather than looking upon the lustful patterns of your lusts. In the lusts of your former ignorances, and think that this will be the life when you ignore the word of Lord God. No, dear brother. The life what you have is very, very unique. I learned a lesson from Apostle John in Revelation 1. A man who says, I have come over here to be a faithful witness. For the word of God. He says furthermore to teach us the importance. How our life has to be conducted. How we have to be. So that I can be in endurance. In patience. To reach that kingdom of Lord God. What are the things that have been demanded? He says I have to be there with patience. And many people are not able to realize the good hand of Lord God the Father to come upon you. You know, when does the good hand of Lord God the Father comes to you? Learn a lesson from Nehemiah chapter 2. He said, The walls of my temple of the Lord God are destroyed. So he requires from the king's forest or the king's park the trees. So he says, For king to write a letter and give to him so that he can go there and he can take the things and he can come to revive the spirit of those people and start the work of the Lord. If you're able to have a heart to do the will of Lord God the Father, Lord God the Father makes a way to provide the things of resources that has been needed for you. The resources which can make you to be rich. When you have a desired heart to be rich to the Lord, as we read that in First Chronicles 28, verse number 9 and 10. A shalom inner man, <laughs> not just heart, the word shalom labab, followed by the one who goes to do the shepherd's desire with the rats on approval in his soul. Then Lord God the Father understandeth, searcheth out every pressure that comes against you to fulfill the inventions of Lord God, the schemes of the Lord God. And then he goes to make, to settle off your every way to the purpose of the Lord God to be shined high.
every way of you. Because the intention of Lord God the Father is to see that you are walking in the terms and conditions of Yehovah Elohim. You have to be in the terms and conditions of Yehovah Elohim. And if people are not able to make up to be the reason why you have been born for the word of God, your people are not able to make up why you have been alive, to be a martyr or my witness for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are born to feed in the word of Lord God. You are born to be a martyr or my witness for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear brethren, when he uses the word martyr or my, it is called to be the one who goes to witness before the church. And when he comes to church over there, he makes up the things to be an absolute viewpoint of his life to get every thought into captivity for Christ. John was put in island of Patmos. You have been put in your respective geographical location, wherever you may be on the earth. As the people would say, seven and a half thousand kilometers, the entire world, taking up or the entire earth, taking up into consideration. Wherever you may be placed. Or it may be in India, 7,500 KMs. You can easily make up to be a witness for the truth by making up your every thought to be brought into captivity for Christ. As Apostle John was laid down in the island of Patmos for the purpose of being a companion. The people who also follow the same thinking, the thinking of becoming a witness for Christ. The people who love to share the same standards of the Lord's mind. Because these people will build up a wall of fortification in their body by looking and to renovate the standards of thinking as per the word of Lord God. And these people will be like a companion where a wife can be to a man. So he said, as a companion in tribulation, Philipses, pressure, and then making up to say as a, a rival wife. You know, the way how a rival wife, a rebellion one, will be pressure upon your head all the time. So he said, in this tribulation and in the kingdom and patience, the word first kingdom, it is nothing but called to be Basileia. And the meaning of the word Basileia, dear brethren, is nothing but in his dominion, in his reign. And the people who shall be in his dominion are the ones who have used their blood to be disciple oriented, to grow up into grammatias, with a royalty of making up again as disciples to grow up into grammatias. Because that's the purpose of the blood they know. And for patience, hupo meno. And the meaning of the word hupo meno, dear brethren, it is nothing but to wait with greatest earnest expectation, having a joy from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun in his expressed body so that he has built a wall of fortification to renovate his head. That's a great patience. Day by day grabbing the word of Lord God. That's a great patience. Sitting and listening for one hour may take a lot of patience. But have a great expression of joy because you're building up a wall of fortification to know what will be in the standards of your future. So in that great patience, what you do, you make up the process of becoming what we can call in simple words as the standards being raised up for your level of thinking in your blood. So he says over here, dear brethren, to be as a faithful witness who has endured. So you will be like a pillar who has been endured. Because every point of life in your blood will be to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So he says you will be there to endure with patience. Because many people today, they don't have this patience. And in this patience, when they don't have their brethren, 
they don't realize what could be that great joy in their blood, a great joy in their body. So they don't have this patience. So he said, the people who shall have great joy in this blood or in this patience is really when they stand up to Lord God as a pillar. So he said, I am a companion for you in this Philip's pressure, in the kingdom, in the patience of Jesus Christ. That's the reason I came to the island of Patmos. That is the reason I have this bigger and valid to serve above this earth. Not to make up yourselves to be strengthened by your positive imaging. Or by making up your life with repeated thoughts. As the people will think in the feelings and the desires of the former lusts. Not for that life or the people they are trying to live. Not at all. You haven't designed for that life. Your life is not that. Your life is something great and superb. As holy he is, so you shall be holy. So he said, I was there in the island of Patmos. The word Patmos is called to be my killing. <laughs> and over here he says, for the word of God and for the martyr of my witness for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in that matter of my witness first, you love to develop a grammatious program <coughs> for joined as disciples to fulfill Matthew 13, 52. And you're going to be there to fulfill that great commission of my Lord in going and making disciples of all the nations. That's what I've been called, a martyr of my witness to the Lord. And such great martyr of my witness for what we have been called. He says it is in Jesus Christos. Because your whole Lord of God is only salvation being represented through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the form of his image. So that you people can have a relaxed dwelling. Because he is a shepherd. A shepherd of your souls. When? When you are able to walk in his terms and conditions. Not the terms of your own mind. And then the word Christos over here. It is nothing but called to be as anointed. Because you have been given in your process of your blood. To make up your thought process. To be absolutely built up of all of fortification in the Lord. Therefore dear brother in Revelation chapter 3 he said. Blotting out your name will happen. Rather than confession of your name before God the Father. Because. You people are not able to walk in the terms and conditions what the word of Lord God calls. Therefore, when I look upon your soul, you haven't matched the image of Christ. You haven't built up a wall of fortification to the standards of Christ. When I look upon your blood, you haven't built up a wall of fortification to the Lord. The same thing happens when you people are not able to make up your thought process to build up as the thinking of Christ in his authority. Therefore, I blot out. And the meaning of the word confess over here is called to be ex homologio. And the meaning of the word ex homologio, dear brethren, is nothing but to praise up, to make up the name to be rising or shooting, because you people have made your hand to write a copy of the law of the Lord of God, to get every thought into captivity for Christ. And for the shepherds, it has to be thrice, as we read that in Ezekiel 21, emphasizing double time thrice, that is six times. The greater you want to become a prophetic word to the people, the greater you write a copy of the law of the Lord of the Lord of a God from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. And join as disciples, growing up into gravity as in the presence of the Lord. That's a bona fide duty. And if you still reject the Lord's mind, let Lord God help you. Dear brethren, the privilege what we have to serve for Christ is so great and unique. Being born as human beings on the face of the earth, we have our own responsibility to make up, to take care of the things pertaining to the world. And if those things haven't been done properly or accurately, it's better to die for us. You don't know what for you have been there in the killing island. With all of energy given for you, rather than dying sin unto death, but not doing the will of the Lord. 
dear brother and sister. Don't live according to the feelings and to the desires of making up to say you have good energy, good health, that's life now. Your ignorance causes you all not to renovate your head, not to make up the thought process to build up as per the demands of the word of Lord God. Don't live such a life. Live a life for truth. Make a life for Christ. A life that which should be absolutely pleased by God the Father in granting us this grace every day. But which cause has kept you and me alive in every past to think what we shall do when we come on this earth to carry his burden by fulfilling the desires of his glory. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost led us, the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head blown eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God, the Father, the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the one to tell, we shall have the eternal truth. The eternal truth for us very simple, believe in Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall let the quiet opposers know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the grace must to care us of thought and God. Herald the word in season, not of sin, because the diamond from my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in will and trinity, for the Bible in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses or hearers. If they know here as dear brother, not brother besides nature, then tarry the course of witnesses and what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, with us, to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for his great privilege, O Lord, to give to fellowship with thee through the word. The burden of you, O Lord, is our primary purpose for what you have made us on this earth. Rather than looking into the creation viewpoint, O Lord, help us look into the creator viewpoint and understand our life to lay down in that Patmos island of killing. The reason of becoming a faithful witness for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and a faithful witness for your word of God. Help us, O Lord, to make you to confess our names before God the Father. To make sure that we have been absolutely faithful workers to do your work, having the gold not to be tested again, being tried in the furnace of fire, when you pass the test coming out to flying colors. That these are that sect of the people, greater than the Rechabites, greater than the Zodokites, Greater than the, any great man in the Bible who was faithful to you, Lord, because we will be the church called to be the wife of my Christ. Having inscribed upon us the image of Christ, help us, O Lord, to understand your mind and to be faithful in each and everything for what you have called, chosen, and already passed to the praise of your glory and your grace. Please, section Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enter and challenge and bless us by this message. Which thou hast prepared and kept for us on today's date of a pretty past, to the praise of your glory, in a matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. In Christ's name we ask, Solid Lord. Amen.